Now, one of the most creative things in Everything Everywhere All at Once is the rapid fire montages that show Evelyn throughout the universe. So much work went into these shots, which are on screen for less than a second, and there's so much going on in them. For this breakdown, I watched them in slow motion, so we could go through them bit by bit. <sighs> and let's get into it. Now, the first one has Evelyn wearing a red jacket in a back alley screaming. Next, we have Evelyn and her daughter looking over the bagel. From here, we jump to her at the movie premiere, and this is in the universe where she never went off with Waymond. We then have her with blood on her head in the IRS building, and this is where she seemingly died at the midpoint. From here, we jump to her singing, which is where she gained the breath control. Now, these are all pretty standard and shown throughout the movie. However, we next jump to the universe in which Evelyn died, and we see her in an urn. Next to her is a fish tank being played on a TV screen, and this is a similar setup to the one that we saw at the stop beside the table. Next, we jump to her working in the universe in which she spun the sign outside the pizza place. This was used by her so she could spin the shield later on, but the sign spinning is actually foreshadowed at the start of the movie. When the family drive to the IRS, they actually pass someone doing it on the street, and Evelyn potentially ended up as this person in another universe. Next, we cut to her in a universe where cats are people, and then look at her in the desert. Judging by the suit in the back, this could be a nuke testing site, and Evelyn looks paler. Don't tell Nolan the test nukes in other universes, because you, you've already given that guy way too many ideas. Now, we then cut to a horrifying world where she seems fractured, and her eyes are bleeding black blood. Tying back to the nuke idea, we see a world that looks like it's in the midst of chemical warfare, with Evelyn wearing a gas mask and urban military attire. Next, she stands in front of a wall of fire, before we see her as a horrible lizard-like monster. Next is a bit of a standard one, before we cut to her as a nun, and then what I'm calling Star Trek Evelyn. We then get an animated world, which is one of my favourite ones. From here, we cut to Evelyn as part of the universe, and this reminded me of Eternity from Marvel Comics. And from here, we go to the Hot Dog Finger universe, where Evelyn's actually in a relationship with Deirdre. This shows how in the infinite space that is the multiverse, that even our enemies can be our closest friends, and it helps Evelyn to later understand how important it is to be kind to people. In this universe, Deirdre is the best thing that's ever happened to her, and she has the potential within her to, be, to become that in some way. Deirdre's clothes are really interesting, and the design for this was actually inspired by a real-life IRS stock photo. Now, after a return to the cinema, we see Evelyn as a man locked up in a jail. Really interesting shot before we transition back to the Jobu Topaki scene, before jumping into her in a neon world with her shoulders resting on a light and black tape around her fingers. We get some reoccurring shots before we jump to a really creepy one. Here we catch what appears to be a murder scene with forensics working in the background and police tape lining the area. Evelyn has her eyes closed and this represents her being the victim. We then jump to her in a HUD before seeing her blended into what appears to be a military airplane camera used on either missiles or guns. Next is her as a little dog, before we jump to her dolled up looking like she's part of the Rio Carnival. More repeated shots before we see her looking like she's part of the member berries, and a shot of her also wearing a casa. We then jump to a shot of her in Asian dress before jumping to one of the great in-jokes in the movie. Here we catch what appears to be a zoom call with Evelyn against a green screen. Now this is actually the VFX team that worked on the movie, and this is them brainstorming what to use in the scenes. Here we can see five artists, and what makes the movie even crazier, is that just five VFX artists did 80% of the special effects for the entire movie. Next time you watch a big Marvel or DC film, look at how many VFX artists are listed in the credits, and compare it to this. Glad these guys got the props they deserve, and that they got included in the movie too, as VFX artists in general are often overlooked. Now from here we jump to Evelyn as a statue, before seeing her standing on a beach in front of a burned out pier. I actually think that this is Brighton, which has a burned out pier as one of its many landmarks. After jumping back to the IRS fight, we go to another world that looks like it's ravaged by chemical warfare, but this time Evelyn's wearing a different type of suit and gas mask. Now whereas she was a nun in another universe, here we see her either as a priest or vicar, before we jump to her as a tree. Next, we catch her back in the IRS building at a different part of the movie before catching her in a snowy street, and then we jump to a completely different actor used for Michelle Yeoh. This shows that in the multiverse, people can even be played by different actors, and you might not know, but originally this movie was meant to be starring Jackie Chan as Evelyn. No, it wasn't playing Evelyn, well, obviously it was he was playing a guy, but it just shows how things can change, and in the multiverse, anything is possible. Now next we jump to her with a short blonde bob cut, lighting up a candle, and wearing a tracksuit. 
Maybe though the father and nun thing was weird, we then see a skeleton in a nun's outfit taking it to the next level. From here we see Evelyn holding up a sweater over her face and this is in the middle of a Polaroid. Next we jump to her as an alien and can see pyramids off floating in the background. There's long been a theory that ancient aliens helped humanity build the pyramids due to the size and scale of them and this world could indeed show that it was in fact aliens. Now from here we go to Evelyn drawn in chalk on some easter eggs before getting her in a world where she's standing in front of a statue with the words meanwhile. The statue appears to be the one that Evelyn was superimposed to onto before and the meanwhile text is probably part of the movie universe or it could be its own TV one that we don't really see. Now after more shots of other parts of the movie we get a really good in joke. Here is a YouTube video about Illuminati symbols hidden in Hollywood films for one frame. This is of course there's some Illuminati symbols hidden in the movie and hey, a nice work guys. Anyway, more shots continue the montage and we get a really weird one with Evelyn as a man who looks like he's called Ian or, or Dave or something. No idea what this is, but they love tennis. They bloody love it. Bet they hit the thumbs up button and, and also subscribe to the channel as well. And next we get an impressionistic painting of Evelyn. Multiverse of Madness showed us every multiverse has got to have a paint world and this is of course theirs. We then cut to Evelyn wearing an 80s digital watch with her eyes looking out from behind her hands. We then see Evelyn as a little baby before jumping to her in a nightclub and then a world in which she's sort of wearing a white domino mask over her face. Next is a nun world where she has several markings on her face before we see lanterns flying up behind her. There's then a world where it looks like Evelyn is the centre of the multiverse and thus we have a multiverse that has a reality with its own multiverse in it. We then cut to her on some planes with what I believe are buffaloes behind her before jumping to a picture of a house with her face flowing above it. Following on from this we get a creepy pasta worthy image with Evelyn screaming as a woman in a cat suit stands behind her. There's a picture of a cat in a hat behind her as well and I hope this is a Halloween costume or it's one of the most terrifying universes ever created. Now the montage following on from this just has Evelyn with different backgrounds showing some of the worlds we've already visited with a couple of ethereal ones dotted throughout. And that's it. I feel like I need to lie down after that. Now after the introduction to the characters, we see Joy and also her girlfriend Becky. Joy then drops this line about how her mother might call her fat or something. Well, in case my mom says something dumb like you're fat or whatever. I thought you said when she says shit like that, it means she cares.